hey guys welcome back so today i want to share with you guys how to paint simple environments this is going to be a great tutorial for beginners especially i'm basically just going to break down my process for painting environments in big steps so yeah i hope you find this helpful and let's get to it so my first step is to break everything down into big shapes so we don't want to worry about any small details or anything like that. We just want to look at our reference photo if you're using one and think about how you can break it down into as few big shapes as possible. So for this example, that's basically the sky, the main mountain range, and the mountain range that's in the foreground. And the next step is to look at these big shapes and see how we can add some colors to them that break them up even further. So for the main mountain range, for example, there's a section of blue where the mountains are in the shadows. I can break it up by adding that blue section to that main mountain range. So next we're gonna just add a little bit more detail. So basically each step we're just slowly adding the smaller details so it's almost like you're just working from big to small and next i'm going to start worrying about light and shadow so i actually made a overlay layer for the lighting and a multiply layer for the shadow even with the light and shadow i just want to look at the big shapes and now we're getting to where I'm gonna start adding smaller details. So a quick tip that I have, if you are used to going in with small details early, is to try to keep your brush size larger. And that kind of prevents you from trying to work on small details if your brush is really big. But now is when I'll start lowering the brush size and actually going in with smaller details. And you can see that this is where the painting starts to kind of look more done. I know in the beginning it honestly just looks like a lot of scribbles, but once you start adding these small details, this is where it all starts to, it's all coming together. The last really step that I have is this is where I will usually merge everything down onto one layer and then start adding textures. So I'll pull out some texture brushes like a rake brush or just something that's got some grain to it and just basically add textures to the painting just to give it a little more depth and a little more interest. And then I have just a couple of bonus tips for you guys. The reference photo that I used didn't really show a lot of this, but one thing I wanted to mention is atmospheric perspective. Basically what this means is if something is far away from the viewer it's gonna have more atmosphere between it so you'll actually see it more as a bluish color so adding atmospheric perspective to your painting can help add depth another tip i have for you is if you are painting a character in your environments is to paint the character last and the reason for this is if you paint in the character first and then paint in the environment around them it's harder to make it look like the character belongs in that environment. Whereas if you already have the environment painted and then you add the character, it helps with, you can pull colors from the environment that's already there. So things like bounce light, you can add because the environment is already there. It's just a, makes it a little bit easier. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.